All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look here at our updated hurricane season hand-drawn forecast. For today's comment of the day, I wanna know which month this hurricane season do you think we will see our strongest hurricane of the entire season? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Anyway, let's get straight into things. All right, now, first things first, we need to talk about the different regions we're gonna be referring to within this video. I've showed you guys this map multiple times this year, but this is for the new viewers. As you can see, we have the Gulf of Mexico, duh. East Coast, duh. Caribbean, pretty much duh. But main development region is a little more interesting. That's not one that you mostly hear of, you know, outside of the weather community. We call that the MDR for short. And then also OTS stands for out to sea, but usually I'll just say out to sea, but that's where out to sea would be. It's pretty much outside of all of those other areas. The only land area that is pretty much considered to be out to sea is Bermuda, just because it's right in the middle. So it doesn't really have a region. We usually consider that to be out to sea for the most part area surrounding Bermuda. All right. Now that we have that out of the way, let's take a look at our temperature forecast here for the hurricane season. We expect above average sea surface temperatures here, mostly for the Gulf Coast, the Gulf, basically the entire Gulf there, the Caribbean, the East Coast region. All of these areas are expected to be, for the most part, above average waters. We're especially seeing areas offshore of the East Coast already have above average sea surface temperatures. The Gulf is currently warming up, so I think they're catching up as well. Uh, to be considered to be above average sea surface temperatures. Now we even have a moderately above average sea surface temperature region here, and that's gonna be mostly offshore of the East Coast. Again, this area is already above average, and I think that's just gonna continue on uh, with time. So I, I really just feel like this is an area that particularly has been, for the most part, above average sea surface temperatures. Now we even have a second above average sea surface temperature region and this is gonna be for the MDR, our main development region. Now this area currently has some slightly below average sea surface temperatures, but I think things are currently warming and I expect that trend to continue. That's what we've seen the past, maybe most years out of the past 10 years, I would say have had this occur. And I think that's gonna continue on this year. I'd be very surprised if it doesn't. Now for the Southern Caribbean, so areas south of Jamaica, south of Puerto Rico, areas in there, we expect a little bit of some below average sea surface temperatures for that little region. That area has had below average sea surface temperatures all year, basically. Since we've been talking about the hurricane season, this area already has had below average sea surface temperatures. And I do expect that to continue on, actually, uh, throughout the hurricane season, just because it's been the case for such a long time so far. And I, and I don't really expect that to change anytime soon, since it's been so consistently there basically for the most part. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on because there's a second below average sea surface temperature region we need to talk about that's much larger. Then we're gonna talk about the wind shear development forecast and then even the overall hurricane season forecast. All right, now here we are taking a look at that second below average sea surface temperature region. And as you can see, basically anywhere offshore of Atlantic Canada, all the way to Europe, south of Greenland, we're expecting below average sea surface temperatures. Uh, and that goes all the way to Portugal, Spain, France, uh, England. We see all of these areas seeing below average sea surface temperatures, even uh, areas in Africa there as well. So this is a very, very large spanning region of those below average sea surface temperatures. Uh, and this has just been an anomaly that has shown up. This isn't really a forecast as much as it is a now cast because we're already in the hurricane season, obviously. So this is just moving forward. So from this point beyond, this is what things should look like. And we're able to really use what's currently there because we're already in the hurricane season. So this is valid as of tomorrow all the way through, you know, November or however long this hurricane season lasts. So it's very, very easy to forecast this. Now, what we're going to do is put this moderate shade of sea, below normal sea surface temperatures on the screen here. And as you can see, it's basically offshore of Newfoundland and Nova Scotia for the most part. There is a pocket of much colder than normal sea surface temperatures that are around for that region. Now, as far as it pertains to winter, this is actually kind of a bad thing for cold lovers in the United States and snow lovers because you usually want to see some warmer water set up over this northern Atlantic region, and that is not the case so far. Hopefully, we see some warming for this upper region so we get more snow and cold this upcoming winter. This video isn't about that, though, although you can check out our most updated, well, I guess it's our first, actually, winter forecast for the winter of 2021 to 2022. Uh, I put a 
I probably put a sticker at the kind of beginning of this video. So you can check that out today. That is what that was. So you can rewind and go find that. I've been putting that every single day to remind everybody that I uploaded that video. Now here's the wind shear forecast that we expect below average wind shear because we're actually more in a La Nina or neutral Enso. So there has been below average wind shear and that is to be expected in a La Nina or neutral Enso hurricane season. That usually does encourage the below average shear. So that has been what we've been going through. Uh, and that's why we've had such a huge hurricane season last season because we had a huge La Nina combined with very far above average sea surface temperatures. Those two things combined is like the biggest ingredients to make just a monster hurricane season. And that is sure enough what ended up for the most part pretty much occurring a historical, pretty much the, the most active hurricane season of all time last year. And that is what we actually forecasted was something record breaking. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at our development forecast and then our overall forecast for the upcoming hurricane season and ongoing hurricane season of 2021. Now, for the development forecast, we do expect below average development here in the Southern Caribbean because of those below average sea surface temperatures mostly. Uh, I just don't see this being a very favorable area for these storms at all. I think below average development should be expected for this region for this upcoming season of 2021 and again, ongoing season as well. Uh, although it's kind of paused right now as we're not seeing much activity as of lately. Slightly above average development should be expected here for the Caribbean and then also up the East Coast. Uh, as of right now, this area does have some slightly above average sea surface temperatures, and this should help this region see slightly above average development for the most part. Now, above average development should be expected for the Gulf as things are near normal or uh, potentially above normal as far as sea surface temperatures are concerned. I do expect some above average activity there in the Gulf, as we've seen for years and years and years now. Uh, basically, these hurricane seasons have been, for the most part, one-upping each other. Uh, above average development in general should be expected for our MDR region or main development region because at this point below average shear slightly above average sea surface temperatures uh, as long as this dry air and and dust that we've been talking about for a couple videos in a row that we've talked about the hurricane season as long as that clears up this should see above average development in that region now the overall forecast Above average development there in the MDR. Obviously, I just talked about that. Not as favorable down there in the Southern Caribbean. I just talked about that as well because, again, the sea surface temperatures are just not as favorable as they could be. I could certainly see it being more favorable if the sea surface temperatures were a little higher uh, and maybe there was a little less shear. That would make this area a bit more favorable. But really, this area isn't that favorable of a tropical region as it is. Above average activity for the Caribbean is what I expect in general. Uh, when we see the above average development there in the MDR and in the Caribbean, all the storms that develop in the MDR are usually heading towards the Caribbean. And then also we could see some homegrown systems there in the Caribbean as well. So those two things combined lead me to be pretty confident we're going to see above average activity in this region. Highest risk, best chance of tropical activity there for the Gulf of Mexico. That has been the case for years, like I mentioned before. I think this isn't going to be an exception here. I think the Gulf can expect a big hurricane season, obviously, this upcoming hurricane season. Because even in the slower hurricane seasons we've had recently, they've usually seen the biggest storms there, like Hurricane Michael, for example. So this is a region where they just tend to exceed compared to the region surrounding. Now, for the East Coast, we expect a wild card because this really depends on where some high pressure systems end up, where low pressure systems end up. Uh, that'll determine if storms make their way up the East Coast or if they just make their way into the Gulf and really just miss the East Coast. There's a lot of things that go into that. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. This is a long range forecast, but we're pretty much talking about a now cast at this point with an ongoing hurricane season. So for that reason, we're, our confidence is pretty high, even though we're talking about months and months and months. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday, when do you think this hurricane season is just going to pick up? Do you think we're going to have to wait till August? Is it going to happen in late July? But edited say, I feel like storms will explode in numbers around mid-August, late August. So I think that could be the case. I think we could have some limited activity up until then. But once we reach that kind of late August time frame, I think things will really pick up. For today's patron Highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum Patrons, John Ben Bennett, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, 
Lira Lapan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catby, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Lou Falego, Gary, Sean Colisi, Dwight, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Crenenthal. If you'd like to be a part of this awesome Patreon end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very, very amazing uh, Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would like to thank our channel members as well, Hair Farms 1 and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button and leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.